please give a warm welcome to the host of Alternate Ending. Hello. Hey, Martin. Dobre rano. How are you? Robin Carey here from Alternate Ending. Hi. Hi. Hi there. Oh, geez. I cannot hear. Oh, so you're going to do it again. Oh, now I can. You can hear us now? Give it a go again, Robin. I'm gonna try try with my my, my Czech <laughs> language, uh, dobre rano or dobre opoudne, ah. um, based on your time time difference. <laughs> That's quite impressive. Hello. <laughs> he's cheating. He's Polish, so he's got like you know he's got some of the language there <laughs> a little bit. Nice. Okay. Yeah. We're neighbors. Yes. No. Th- and thank you for for joining us um, uh, today. We're really excited to talk about uh, the true adventures of Wolf Boy. Now, are, I understand you're joining us in the in in your in your native country of uh, Ch- uh, Czechoslovakia or, or Czech Republic, excuse me. And are you in Prague currently, or? Yeah, I am because I, I came here for the shoot. Uh, funny enough, I, I, I <laughs> it's the absurd situation when I come home and I'm, I work here as a foreign director. So we brought a, a job from uh, from UK and. Um, I'm an, I'm just editing right now. So oh my yeah. goodness, well w- uh, we have to say that Prague is one of our our favorite uh, cities in the world. I think it might be our it, favorite. It is our favorite. We it went is. there in what was it 2010? So we went there like right before we got married. We went for like a pre wedding, pre honeymoon. Or sorry, yeah, pre honeymoon trip. Like took our pre honeymoon there, and we landed there, and we we're like, maybe we shouldn't leave. Like maybe this is <laughs> this is yeah, what heaven yeah. is like. Like it was just. Oh, the vibe was wonderful. It's beautiful. I, it's, we were in love. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, I, I, I especially after so, so such a long time in LA, I, I started to appreciate again that you can really get from one place to another within uh, a reasonable time, and and yes. uh, the whole city takes uh, max half an hour. You know, so it has definitely its advantages. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. Well, we would love to be there with you. Obviously, we're 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 uh, reaching you from uh, Madison, Wisconsin, here in the United States. Uh, I think we'd like to be anywhere but the United States, but certainly <laughs> would like to be pro- in Prague. I'm happy to hear that production um, is now, you know, in, in other countries is moving along, and I hope that inspires, um, you know, just people to think about when they're choosing locations. It's already branched out well beyond Lo- Los Angeles. Is kind of the you know. The, a lot of shoots now happening in Georgia, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, certainly overseas. Um, but it's great that you're able to continue to move forward with with projects um, during this very unusual time. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I think it's uh, it's definitely good. But who knows what will happen in the next few weeks? I mean, yeah, especially here in, in Czech, it's it's going a little bit uh, downhill right now. But the, the film productions are going on. I know that there are a couple of the TV shows. Carnival Road is filming, as far as I'm concerned, and and a couple of others. So yeah, I think it's it's great. I agree. Yeah. Speaking of carnivals, you probably noticed my my backdrop here is actually <laughs> a shot from uh from your wonderful film. We had such a great uh, time with uh, the True Adventures of Wolf Boy. Um, the title is is very interesting because it it. It, it it makes you feel as though it's it's a very it's a fairy tale and, and the film is very much shot to me at least the, the the vibe that I got from it was had a very fairy tale quality. Um, I picked up a lot. It's, it's almost like an urban fairy tale, and I love the way that you um, edited it together as well and had those elements where there was almost chapters uh, to the story as well as beautiful um, design and, and illustrations. Uh, I also got a big Pinocchio uh, uh, vibe from it as well. So I don't know if that was all intentional or if that's just my my take on it, but um, really really enjoyed the the film. Oh, thank you. That's 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 great to hear. I mean, obviously, yeah. The the idea of the of the Odyssey adventurous uh, children book was definitely there uh, in order to underline the whole tonality and and I guess the uh, something all is crawling for like uh, the, the the fantasy world which is the safe place that's uh, what we have connected with the with with, with with childhood and and so that's why it's called true adventures of all way because the real the true adventures will start after he goes through the whole journey and and experiences and and that's that's uh, when he realizes uh uh that it's not just him who feels different that uh, every everyone around us one way or another have those feelings and the fact that we have it for ourselves uh, doesn't mean that we have to be lonely and alone because we can 
find a connection with each other uh, through exactly this feeling. And um, yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's the number one thing I think we took away from it and probably the most important message that everybody could hear. Um, Martin, for folks who haven't seen the movie but soon will, uh, could you talk a little bit about sort of the premise and sort of a little bit about uh, the plot of the movie? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, uh, I'd say that uh, it. I would hope that it's a film which uh, everyone can found him or herself in 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 the universal theme of a uh, of a feeling like when you're trying to find your place. Where is your place in the world? And 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 uh, the uh, coming of coming of age uh, genre, uh, the realization what the life is about is just, uh, it, it, I hopefully this is a fresh and rather uh, different take on that theme because um, the whole uh, quest that Paul has, uh, has to go on, uh, I, I'd say the story is that it's, we, we meet this kid who lives with his father and has the disease, which is kind of, uh, which makes him an outsider for the society, and and uh, he's trying to deal with it, obviously, uh, with his own way. And the father is trying to uh, deal with that thing, with the post disease, uh, the way which may not be the most effective. And uh, so Paul escapes because um, uh, the mom wasn't there for him, and uh, we don't know where the mom is, but she sends him letter and uh, invites him to come to find her and so the journey begins and on the journey that's why I'd say it's like an odyssey where he meets peculiar various characters uh, who um, help him to fulfill his uh, his story and, and, and give him answers to some questions which um, uh, I would hope that everyone uh, has experienced so uh, that is the hook that's how you can connect with him i hope and and obviously yeah and then and the, the whole setting and style of the movie is um something which i was particularly uh kind of keen on finding the right balance of uh, of the style so hopefully it's uh, it's not something you have seen before it's not uh a fairy tale in Tim Burton. It's not a version of Tim Burton, Terry Gilliam kind of thingy. Uh, so we were hoping to get it some kind of unique style and, and world it takes place in. So that that, that should attract hopefully. Yeah, it's, well. it's very grounded while still preserving the fairy tale element um, to it. And um, you mentioned uh, Paul, the character played by J played wonderfully by Jaden Martell uh, has uh, hypertrichosis. So it's a very external. Um, you know, it's just a very condition. external, it's an external condi condition. condition, very, yeah. you know, so you can see, uh, see it. But as you mentioned, too, I think what, what really identified with me is you're right, like everybody has something, maybe it's not as external, but we're all feeling, you know, isolated yeah. or lonely um, and wanting to connect with, with people, but not knowing how and, you know, kind of finding your, your group or finding your, 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 the, yeah. the, the people in your life. And oftentimes it's interesting because I think we all, uh, come up with a end of the or a solution in our mind on what's going to make us happy and we forget that it's the journey along the way and that's what that's the piece where I, I think that I, I got from this as well too it is so much more about the journey than something that's going to solve these feelings that you have there's not one thing um, so I, I that's yeah. that's that's certainly what uh, what we took away from it I, I would add one thing probably I should say is at, what I particularly loved about Olivia's script is that it's not heavy melodramatic uh, story. Mm -hmm. It's not taking itself uh, too seriously, and it, it has a fresh and rather whimsical or interesting take on it. So there was great um, play with, uh, oh, great to play with kind of absurd humor, which I was trying to inject also in the visual form of the film. And so the fact that it's not uh, some heavy. Yeah, it's not melodramatic, I would say, and that's what I liked uh, about the tone of the film. Well, your your humor element certainly came through for me. There was um, early on in the film. There's an infomercial, which you obviously had to shoot. It wasn't something that was, uh, <laughs> right. you know, like it's available. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that piece. Did you? Because you seemed like you had a lot of fun, uh, fun with oh, it. I'm, I certainly got a lot of laughs out of the infomercial. I'm so glad you're mentioning because that that is my little jewel. I was so proud of it, and I wanted to look. 
I wanted it to look as bad as the infomercials do, and so <laughs> I shot it completely by myself with no crew, just me with the video camera. That's <laughs> and and uh, we had um, uh, yeah, it was it was really uh, fun little project within the whole project because um, we had um, uh, obviously the, the great team from Legacy who did the main makeup, the hair and makeup for for Paul. Uh, they helped with those um, uh, like a prosthetics on on the kids. But originally, I wanted to find really uh, kind of disabled children and to be authentic, which appeared to be uh, quite complicated for obvious reasons. And so it was manipulated in post. Uh, um, and but the shoot was just great because we found this amazing actor. I think he was from uh, Canada who who just made the the principle uh, real and believable because I actually think he believed in it and that's what made it kind of uh, funny. <laughs> yeah, both of us were like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? But at the same time, again... I'm so glad. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, yes. <laughs> that I'm really, really happy because unfortunately it comes in the time of the movie where you don't really know what is it about, so it's not the... A full laughter, but if you play it separately, I, I think there are little hidden Eastern eggs um, for the second time viewer, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then, you know, like you said, too, I think you bring together so many interesting characters into this. And I feel like the, you know, between uh, Jade Martell's dad, played by Chris Messina, bringing in John Totoro, Chloe Savini, like that, that you have such a big cast that you've pulled together for this, um, which, you know, I think sort of just highlights you know the script and the direction everything that's going on in the movie um can you talk a little bit about how you work to bring this cast together and and a little bit about that process ah uh, well it's uh for me it was a new experience obviously this being my first feature film um was uh with a little bit of a pressure on me obviously because you don't have a reputation to deal with and all we had was the great script obviously and i thought it did speak for itself which eventually it did but of course with people like John, for example, you first do the meeting, and it's uh, it's almost like you're auditioning for the actor yeah. <laughs> to accept you, which was um, uh, uh, fine. And and John is like non-compromising type of person, very direct and very uh, honest, which I really like. And also, he's very intelligent, very bright. So you, there's no space for mistakes, if you mm -hmm. know what I mean. Like to know what you're talking about. Especially when I get nervous, I start to mumble like I will. Same, very, same. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah, and, and so, and so it, it was. It was interesting, but uh, hopefully I passed eventually. Then, then he, we had another meeting with Olivia as well uh, with him. So that that was probably the the like really. I, I thought I am auditioning for John, and and he accepted you <laughs> for reasons because he. Well, how do I see the character? And so, and then whether we share the same uh, point of view, um, then uh, uh, yeah, and, and it's with those like a uh, big and experienced actors, it really is about uh, meeting and talking about it, and and how do I see it, and how do they see it, and then if it kind of clicks, um, then then it can go on, um, and then but uh, I would say that for uh, Paul, I was getting ready to see thousands and thousands of kids because obviously that was the main thing and and learning from great masters like uh, Milos Forman, speaking of my native uh, background, um, when uh, I, I know he did for every role uh, when he was casting a movie over a thousand people. So I, would, I really set up the, the whole system for it in my head. But we had... Uh, we, we found Jaden amongst first 50 mm -hmm. and it was like absolutely immediately. And we had really great kids, but uh, he, he, sh he shined through like it was, it, it was quite immediate and, and almost, I felt like I'm, I'm cheating, you know, because I really thought there needs to be a, a hard struggle, work. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so when we found him so soon, it was really uh, quite surprising. Uh, also the, the the weird thing about casting was that because of his her makeup, he, he doesn't have a face to act with. So the way I was casting it, I was giving the, the kids the ski masks. So so I can focus only on the on on eyes, and I was basically casting a kid's eyes. Um, so 
that was quite uh, interesting too. And yeah, I mean, and, and the rest was really just traditional. Like uh, you, first you see tapes, then you do meeting, then we do another round, another round. You try various options, combinations, and and that's how we uh, got it. And then we had a lot uh from local we shot in buffalo upstate new york and um so we used uh they're really 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 nice people there and very kind of not spoiled like in la you know when you come with the crew they they open the shotgun at you in in, in buffalo <laughs> they really really encouraged it and they kind of uh, they it, I, I felt like buffalo is full of film enthusiasts so we had quite a few uh, characters from local uh, community and especially like they're very colorful characters and and like the 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 guy who is on the gas station which they I shouldn't spoil it but there is a scene on the gas station and he really is very specific so that is owner of the bar where we used to go after uh, rehearsals and um, so yeah it, was, it, was <laughs> it does make it just feel more authentic that way I think that you can feel that then within the movie oh. you know and I think. I think Jaden, to your point, is perfect for this because he does so well play a character who seems meek at first. You know, he seems somewhat insecure and meek and he's quiet. And yet he's a character that can turn. You know, he can grow in strength. He can become empowered. And you can really see that transition in him in the movie. And I think, again, that's why he's perfect for the role. So Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and give yourself some credit because I think it speaks to your talent to be able to um, – get people excited about the idea. Obviously, again, a great script by Olivia, but, um, you know, not everybody, not every lead wants to sit in a, you know, with makeup, uh, with chair. makeup <laughs> in a makeup chair for, you know, however many hours a day, and then also have their face obscured, which is their main, you know, way of conveying, um, conveying, uh, you know, acting. And and despite all of those things, you know, you were able to, to get, uh, you know, Jane in on board as well, too. And uh, John Turturro, who's just, he's having, I can tell he's having so much fun being the Rob saw him and was like, master. oh, John Turturro's <laughs> yeah, in yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, with him, what, what was really great and what I've learned a lot about working with actors, because he really is very, very kind of... Uh, passionate and and uh, and he really needed to know what how mr silk looks like and and we kind of agreed that we want to get away uh from the i don't want to say tuturo look but the, the the hair was something we really kind of found like um, a good click and 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 um so the the, the 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 visual side of the character and wardrobe and everything was really really a, Quite a process to to get together, and it was uh, Donna Zakowska who is uh, uh, actually John brought her in the uh, wardrobe uh, costume designer, amazing talented woman. Again, uh, the, uh, all the elements uh, in our department brought uh, something, in, and working with John and seeing how specific he was about it and, and that we could talk about it and he understood how important it is was just just really great and but one thing about Jaden, i just wanted to say that uh, yeah it, it is something which we were hoping to get across that you really don't think about the whole makeup and and hair that you see it the first time you go oh, what is it and then by the end of the movie you, you just realize okay it was completely natural but to make it look effortless effortless like that was just tremendous work and there's really so much effort and so much energy spent by so many people that I cannot thank them enough but Jaden had to be every day four hours prior to the shoot in the makeup and then spend the, so it's just it was a, a, a kind of Zen Buddhism uh, exercise I'd say and 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 but he, he's really one of a kind he, he's quite special and um, and and little side stories that, like you said, uh, not everyone would uh, take it. Is uh, the, the movie it, which made him kind of rocketing up mm -hmm. the sky, was uh, was released during the shoot, and and his his value grew up so far that the, at some point the producers just going a little nervous, like just be nice to him. We don't want to lose him. <laughs> Right. Can I get the, you anything? The, the was yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So because of that, did, you know, you're talking about multiple locations that you're shooting. You're talking about highly complex setup to start the day to get the to get rolling. So I guess how long did that end up 
uh, making the shoot, given that you have all this extra complexity that you had layered in? Well, it, it is a small movie, and uh, I wanted to be respectful to the producers giving me their trust. So, and lucky enough, I have quite uh, a lot of experiences uh, because I started to work in commercials and documentaries. So, I believe with my team and, and my AD mainly, I can deliver what I promised. So, we were lucky that we didn't go even one day over and, and, uh, we showed the movie the way we wanted, but it was a lot of logistic uh, kind of puzzles to solve uh, because we had only 30 days to shoot the whole wow. film. Wow. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, yeah. And there's yeah, so many would... nice set pieces like the the one uh, behind me here as well, too. So, that yeah, that's not easy to, to accomplish, but speaks to, you know, your ability – as an artist to still, you know, maintain that, that business side as well too, and, and maintain efficiency, um, especially as a first feature, I imagine that's important to be able to demonstrate that as like, you can deliver a great film, but also on time and on, on budget. Yeah, I guess so. I, but I, <laughs> I just, because Kimberly, I, I felt so kind of grateful to her and I really don't, I, I wanted her to, trust to someone again when he says something and so uh, like like myself because again I, I didn't have any credits to to back it up so uh, it was just a word and when I when we said yes we can do it then the fact that we actually delivered it uh, even though of course the the artistic side of it is definitely more important to me but that was something uh, I was proud of too but it goes really the kudos should go to to Craig Pink as the first AD and the whole team really um, well, one thing we're very proud of, and uh, we have a large LGBTQ audience as well. T- um, you know, the, the the fact that that representation is is w- captured within the film, I imagine present within Olivia's uh, script, um, and then just fantastic casting with with Sophie uh, Gianna Moore um, in there as uh, Ristiana. Uh, I, I really loved all of those those elements in there as well too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, of course, it is a big thing. But what I loved about it particularly is that it's not too heavy on the nose and it's just natural. And that's how I feel it should be presented because then it uh, kind of injects all the right feelings and emotions into it. So, um, yeah. It didn't feel shoehorned in. It felt very authentic the way that you brought it in and genuine to how a situation in real life might be versus just kind of forcing, like, I got to figure out a way to get this in here to check a box. Yeah, we talked a lot about, like, normalization. (laughs) Like, just infusing these things within the movie just does so much, I think, to just, Mm. it's just a part of our world, you know? And by doing it in that way, I think it makes it... I don't know. I guess it just makes it more, I don't know, normalized. I don't know. I can't think, you know, it just makes it just normal. It's just part of every day. So we definitely appreciated that. Well, thank you. Then I'm glad. I I think it's the balance and the fact that uh, it was Sophie and she was so authentic and it was just, you we were just trying to capture it and that, that was that was the, that was it really and, and she just delivered really, it because she was authentic and so that's how you kind of conserve it. Well, we talked earlier about it being such an unconventional time with with COVID happening. Uh, many of the filmmakers that we've we've met with haven't had a chance to have premieres uh, for recently completed films. Now, yours did have a chance to premiere at Fantastic Fest. Did you get a chance to see it with the live audience? Oh yes, I did oh, indeed. Good. Oh, how did that go? Uh, it was absolutely. I realized that is the reason why I why you made it because yeah it it is it is that is the moment when you feel like people are reacting to it and it, it was just uh, yeah it, it was great and nerve wracking at the same time I felt like I'm before the movie started I felt like I'm I'm volunteering to put my head on the chopping block really uh, because that's how you feel like completely about to explode. But then at the same time, it's just exciting to see and feel if and when the, the movie somehow resonates or you can you can feel the vibe going in the room that it, when it when people smile or, or laugh. And, and so, yeah, that's definitely the best feeling uh, I, I've had. It feels yeah. like so much pressure, you know, like you said, you're you're out there, you feel exposed because it's like, I'm waiting for you to laugh at the infomercial a little bit. Yeah. Like, are they going to laugh? Are they going to get it? What I'm going for? You know, there's definitely some moments in there that, um, you know, are hard too. you know, I think 
it's it's you know especially right out of the gate some of those opening scenes for me with the 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 mean guys in there you you know you've you got to infuse the bullies you got to start somewhere so that you can rise up but still difficult to watch too and so I feel like you just sort of take the audience on a little bit of an emotional roller coaster so it's probably interesting to see that play out in a large group too yeah yeah no definitely and and I hope it doesn't sound like uh, it's about me it's just, or, or my feelings because of course it is not my movie but the problem or the reason why you feel so pressured is because you feel responsible towards all the people who have put yeah. so much in it so you do want people to like it or at least you want the movie to feel like it's communicating with them and uh, if not then it's it is a f- it would be my failure to all the friends and member of the crews who survived those sometimes not so nice moments mm-hmm. you know uh, it happens because it is like being in the war a little bit and all the the, the, whole, the only ex, uh, uh, justification i have is the final film so if it doesn't work then i really uh, would feel bad yeah. well thankfully you don't have to worry about that it's been met with such uh, such a warm reception um oh. Uh, I'm very, very happy for you and all of the success and accolades, you know, that are going to be coming uh, from from it as well, too. And, you know, the release is is happening October 30th. Are you all doing uh, we've been asking if, if, you know, (laughs) Zoom meeting or anything like that to regroup or to celebrate celebrate the the, the official release? I don't know. All all I did is that I made a special poster, which is only for it's been made only for the closest the crew and so i'm gonna send them prints just to celebrate it but uh yeah i mean i'm in touch with mo- most of them with the uh, the the andrew uh palermo i shot a couple of commercials as well and 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 we stayed as friends i i've met some amazing people nick rata the composer we became really like close friends now i'd say and and uh, aaron osborne the production designer Paul Shu, sound designer. So, so yeah, we're still kind of in touch. So, yeah, I'm really excited and, and curious and, and hopeful and scared, of oh. course. <laughs> well, if we were there, we would take you out for what is our favorite beer in the entire world, oh. which is there's this Czech dark beer, but you, I think you can only get it out of a, like a keg. I don't know. But we, we, went, we went to a beer garden. We went to this beer yeah. garden. We sat okay. there and they came around and all they did was just put little extra ticks every time we got another one. And it didn't even feel like, you know, we, we were, didn't it's even feel like we were having that many beers. They were also pushing shots on us as well. They too. were. So we they, accepted it was a big couple upsell, of those. Yeah, big upsell. But well, definitely our favorite. Now everything is closed, yes, and, oh. and everything is shut down. So like in Prague without pops, it, it is weird. Yeah, it is definitely a strange time. Yeah. Well, we look forward to coming back to Prague at some point uh, when we're able to, and then look forward to all of your future work. We'll let you get back to your editing because I'm sure you're very busy, yes. and uh, that's great that you're, you're editing yourself um, as well too. Now, do you do just I have a- an editor? I kicked him out, so we yeah. can do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're looking forward to the next project. Hopefully, well, when that one's out as well, we, we'd love to get back in touch with you and, and sit down and talk about that. All right. So thank you. I, I would love that. We have uh, finally finished the script, and so I'm looking forward to it. Thank that you. That sounds Perfect. great. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Take care.